<coughs> hey YouTube, WarriorCraft13 with the first part of the bug out, <coughs> full bug out kit. And you can pretty much only see half of it so far. I'm just gonna show you everything. There is my EDC, my vest, food bag, my tool kit. Uh, my big first aid kit, my ops pack, my huge uh, sustainability pack, uh, my survival belt that you saw before, some gas masks. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. Let me just put this right. <clears throat> yeah, ah, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah, like I said, it's a lot of stuff, and uh, wider, and that black thing, that tarps with a uh, really warm sleeping mat that's got, uh, it's actually really cheap, but it's got the space blanket on the bottom, so you can use it to reflect heat, or you can use it to sleep on it, and uh, the idea behind this, the idea behind bugging out, uh, with me, one problem I see, the biggest problem I see is uh, sustainability. Now, if I'm going to bug out, it's going to be my very, very, very last option. I have a very good place I'm going to bug out to. And, uh, well, depending on the situation, I might bug out right away, run out to my bug out location. where. But from there, I would never consider leaving unless I really, really have to. And the idea that you're going to come back in 72 hours if you left your home doesn't sound really realistic to me I mean if you have to run if you're leaving everything you have behind especially people who you know build bug out bags and have guns and lots of food and stuff you know if things have gotten so bad that you're running away from where you live you're probably not gonna be back in 72 hours and uh, you're gonna need a lot more stuff than what people have so this is my full bug out survival system with just a buttload of stuff that covers pretty much every contingency and gives me a long term sustainability wherever I find myself. There's still a few things that are not here, uh, a few things that are getting fixed, uh, some things that are still arriving in the mail. but. It's, and it's an ever-growing kit, changing it, do a lot of hikes, exploring, uh, mountain climbing, urban exploring, cave exploring. I'll try to do as much exploring as I can. I really like to be outside. And, uh, yeah, but this is uh, the beginning of... Uh, because I will not be going out alone. If I'm bugging out, I'm looking at four to eight to maybe a dozen people with me for sure and there is at the minimum I will have four people with me so I have to feed those four people and and my water is not here I have 60 wa liters of water with me in the house right now at all times and I can fill another 30 liters of water so I'm counting on having a lot of people with me and I'm gonna need a lot of food and a lot of tools and especially if you're gonna be bugging out for good and running to a location that might not be safe or might not have food or might not have water. You want to have both food and water and I will cover and uh, first aid and more than just first aid you want to have long-term healing capability so I'm actually planning to have some people who know what they're doing more in first aid than I know uh, who will probably be in my group uh, you want to be able to build a shelter, to have fire, to gather food, to purify water. And uh, so this will be, this will provide all of that and keep hygiene of all of the people in the group, keep people healthy. Uh, this will provide all of that in a long term bugging out indefinite stay in the woods situation for more than one person. And I would also tell the people who are bugging out with me to grab everything from their toilets or their personal needs, uh, all of their first aid, medicine, everything they have in the house, all long term, all food actually, and uh, all water and drinks they can get, uh, fill any bottles, throw 
all of their underwear and all of their clean socks into a bag and jeans and some t-shirts and some warm clothing and maybe a blanket if they have one or the bed cover and come to where I am and we would all get out so I would have all of their gear plus all of this and I do have a vehicle that can pack I can pack all of this into my vehicle and have room for another two people's uh, gear two people's gear like if I have two more people who are seriously geared up like I am I could fit another one or maybe two people but if you're talking about someone who's not prepared and all and just grabs the things he needs on the fly I can fit four or five people stuff in there no problem and I can always fit four more people in my car if I have more than that I would probably have more vehicles as well because all of those people that would be bugging out with me have cars as well and vehicles and I probably wouldn't always be bugging out with all of them at the same time but I would meet them up halfway to my bug out location to my safe location so whenever something really bad happened we would communicate by phone or uh, radio or walkie talkie or messaging of some kind and everyone would bug out and meet up at a certain location that uh, everybody pretty much knows to go to and I'm gonna this is gonna take more than a few videos uh, to review everything but I will go through it fast uh, really really fast as fast as I can and I will explain why everything is in here and why I prefer to have such a heavy loadout and if I don't have a car by any chance I can always load uh, people animals including horses that which there are some around uh, dogs which there are some around that I can load with some gear I can always make a pool cart like a rickshaw that I can push my gear in or have friends help me pull. Uh, I know how to make a wheel or where to get a wheel. So I could carry all of this gear and in the end if I can't, if I can only carry what I can carry on myself, I would make a selection of the gear I would take and depending on how bad things are I would know what to take and I would leave other stuff behind. Uh, I would always choose to go tool heavy because you can always make stuff and I would drop uh, serious amounts of food and water mostly and clothing because uh, I wouldn't need that if it's life and death situation clothing goes out the window uh, big parts of food big parts of water so I would drop from 90 liters of water to maybe 10 or 12 liters of water which is still a lot of weight but gives me uh, six days if one person three days two people and you can always ration that out and last a lot longer so if and but the most important the thing people forget and the thing is not mentioned a lot on YouTube uh, skills knowing what to do and knowing how to do it is the most important thing you need to know you need to acquire you need to have skills on how to survive how to get through tough situations and what to do uh, with all the gear you have tools are good tools make life easier make it more comfortable and just because the proverbial crap has hit the fan doesn't mean you have to live like it's the 1800 or the Paleolithic age you can live comfortably cleanly uh, enjoy a lot of commodities sure you might not have internet but with a solar charger and a laptop you can have entertainment it's just an option of what you choose to carry and I choose to live even in, even in the woods while I do hunt and uh, make stuff out of wood uh, and I like to make my own stuff I like to make my own shelters because they're bigger than tents they can be more comfortable than tents uh, doesn't mean I won't have my laptop with me or other stuff that I like my tablet or I don't know once we even took a TV uh, a few computers uh, playstations and we set up a whole system in the woods I don't know 40 50 miles away from the nearest civilization we had a big ass party just uh, hanging out under the skies and playing video games and having a huge fire uh, all run on a gas powered generator so you don't have to reduce yourself to having a fire and eating a dead possum on stick uh, you know you can live comfortably you can carry food you don't have to carry all kinds of food you can gather uh, plants and fruits and vegetables along the way and or from nature tubers if you know and roots which to get 
uh, if you recognize flowers, that potato has a beautiful flower that's easily found if you know what you're looking for, wild potatoes. Depending, of course, where you live. Because uh, if you live somewhere, there's desert, there's a lot less vegetation that you can... So you got to know where you live, and you got to have maps of where you live and all of that stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I sidetracked a little bit. I'm going to cover everything that I carry with me but keep in mind this is not just for me this is for four five to six people and uh, at least four people probably six but uh, I do have a location 70 kilometers that's about a hundred and uh, no that's about 40 miles away from my, where I live and uh, out there I have animals and I have woods, I have a safe location, several houses. All my neighbors know me, it's a small place, everyone's armed of the ass, of the teeth, I mean, apologies for my French. And uh, But if I can't reach there by car, it'll be a whole day, maybe two day walk, maybe longer depending on what's happened. Maybe it'll take me a week to get there, uh, maybe they'll be, but if, well, no matter what happens, if there's civil unrest and people are being gassed, there's tear gas everywhere, I have two working gas masks that I can give to me and my or another person, and I have other masks I can use for myself if I have someone who's weaker in my group, like girls who can't really, who've never been gassed before in my life, I've been tear gassed a few times, first time when I was very young by accident, well the cops accidentally gassed our school instead of the protesters, a few canisters got away. So I know what it's like, I can take it now, but someone might not be able to and I could give them the gas mask and give someone else a gas mask that may be ill or injured and needs to bring clean air. I can give other masks, dust masks to other people and show them how to uh, protect their eyes because they have also uh, desert and diving goggles. I just have gear for almost every contingency that I could think of, every contingency that could survive. Because you can't be prepared for everything, but I try to be prepared for almost everything that I can think of. And uh, I reviewed the Bug Out Survival Belt. That was the first thing I reviewed. Uh, I will be reviewing my <laughs> EDC, uh, that black bag over there, the one at the end. Uh, I will be showing you what's in here. It's a food kit. There's some lit. Uh, that is my ops bag, the black one. Uh, that is my big first aid kit. Uh, I mentioned that's my camping uh, tent system. It's tarps. I don't have a tent here. My tent is arriving. Uh, but these tarps I've used for years, and I have another tent in my garage, which is a 70s tent, which is enormous. Uh, Gas masks here, a uh, pouch full of useful stuff here. This black thing, it got baby wipes and all kinds of things. Uh, the backpack has, the big pack has a lot of stuff attached to it. Uh, toilet paper, those are b big uh, Russian Cold War 60s, 70s binoculars. They're amazing. They're really heavy, really heavy, but they're amazingly good. Uh, pan little pot, pot cover, and that bag is filled with mostly food and comfort items and uh, blankets, uh, just long-term sustainability survival kit. I have a bag full of literature of things that I would want to read on the road, uh, that's this bag here, some more tools in it. I don't have the fancy foldable shovel, this one's pretty bad, but I won't dig to really hard dirt with this because this can break. So I have this guy, this is just solid steel pick, you can dig through frozen dirt with this or anything else, uh, really hard dirt and then do the other work with this. Uh, mini crowbar and the tool set, there's a whole gas mask pouch that's filled with tools, that's this thing here. And uh, it'll take a while to get through all of this and next time I'll be showing it, I won't be putting it all uh, on my bed like this but uh, it'll be one item and I'll review one system one thing at a time I reviewed a few thi uh, one thing already I reviewed the uh, bug out survival belt which is always and the small first aid kit and the snack pack which are always with m uh, really close to wherever I am the big first aid kit now rides in the car with me all the time and uh, <clears throat> my EDC is with me all the time as well of course 
So I will review my EDC next because it's really fast with just some uh, personal survival kit, a small fire kit, and a few more items in there. It's nothing special, so it'll be fast to get through. And then I'll slowly review everything else and what I hope will be uh, a few videos. Not that many that I will try to keep short. So, yeah, but so you guys can see and appreciate it. That is a lot of gear everywhere. Uh, there's some canteens back there, water bottles, more stuff. And um, I will be <coughs> hopefully flying through this stuff now that I made the introduction. And uh, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with the next one.